my name is Lisa. And I'm Andrew. We're so glad you were here with us this morning. In just a few minutes, we will worship together, and then our pastor will come and give us today's message. All together, we'll be here for just over an hour. But before we get started, we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some next steps and events happening right here at Oasis Church. For anyone that is visiting us for the first time, your next step is to fill out a Connect card. We would love to know that you're here and be able to connect with you about everything going on here at Oasis. You can also use the connecting cards for prayer requests. We would love to pray over you and with you about anything going on in your life. We also have a gift for you today. So bring your connect card out to the lobby after the service and stop by the connecting point desk so we can meet you and give you your gift. If you would like to know more about Oasis Church, then your next step is to join us for an open house on May 20th. In this short meeting following each service, you get a chance to meet with the pastors and leaders. Find out more about us and ask any questions you may have. A new semester of Connect Groups are beginning on June 3rd. All of our groups are listed online or in a group's flyer, which can be found at the Connecting Point desk. Register today and get connected. Every year we help Cedar Ridge Elementary School, which was our church home for eight years, with their yearly fundraiser. We need a dozen volunteers to help serve food and clean on Thursday, May 17th, starting at 4 p.m. We only need you for two hours, from 4 to 6 p.m. or from 6 to 8 p.m. If you would like to take part of this community outreach event, sign up at Connecting Point or with a Connect card today. Thanks so much for being with us today. We believe the church isn't just a place to come to, but it is a family where you belong. Make sure to connect with us at theoasiscc.com and on social media so you can stay up to date with everything going on around here. We hope you have a great day. Well, good morning, Oasis Church. Let's go ahead and stand together as we worship our God, as we worship our King. So let's lift our voices here this morning. Here we go.
This morning I realized that uh, things, uh, situations in life uh, can really affect us in, in how we think. And this morning maybe things aren't going so well. Um, I encourage you just to set your eyes on Jesus this morning because we can say it is well with our soul because of the eternal hope that we have through Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. Uh, so this morning let's just set our eyes uh, to Jesus, the author and creator of our faith.
And every week here at Oasis Church, we decide to partake in communion together. And we do this for the simple reason of remembering the cross. You see, Jesus, when he was with his disciples, he, he said, as often as you do this, as often as you, as you take of this bread and this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And so here in a minute, the, the guys and, and gals are gonna come pass out this piece of bread, this small piece of bread and this cup of juice. And this just represents what Jesus did for us on the cross, his body 
that was put up on that cross for us and his blood that was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. Because you see, because of our sin, we deserve to die. We deserved uh, that punishment. But Jesus stepped in the picture and he took on that punishment for us. He died in our place. He took our sin. He took our shame. And he died for that in our place. And for that reason, we can say that God is good. And we're going to continue to sing. Uh, we're going to continue to worship. And while those are handed out, you can feel free to take those whenever you're ready. But we're going to sing a, a new song. And the actual chorus of this song was written over about a century ago. And, uh, you know, it's one of those songs where you're unsure of even who the author was. But we know that for a thousand years that people were singing this simple chorus that, God, you're so good. God, you are so good to me. And we can say that despite our situation, despite our circumstance, because we know what we have waiting for us. We know that we have eternal hope, that we have an eternal future in, in Jesus and through what he did for us on the cross. See, because sometimes we can tend to look at God in, in maybe the wrong way. We see our situation and we say, well, if, if this is happening to me, if I'm having to go through this, God, you must be this way or you must look like that. We look at God through the lens of our own life. But the reality is, it's quite the opposite. That we need to look at ourselves through the lens of what God sees. See, because our identity, everything that we have is found in Him. And we just went through this identity series uh, that Pastor Greg has gone through with us. So we know who we are. We know that we are children of God. And so we're just going to continue to sing and to lift up the name of good and just declare how good God is. And maybe this morning, as you walk through these doors, you're, that's, that's a hard thing to say. It's a hard thing to say that God is good when things can be going wrong. Maybe you had bad medical news. Maybe a family member had just died. Maybe things just aren't going right in your life. But this morning, we have the opportunity to sing in faith. God is good. God, you are good over this situation in my life. You are good over this situation in my life. Because the Bible says all good things come from God. So this morning, let's step out in faith as we sing this song and as we take communion, as we remember the cross. Uh, but before we do that, let's pray together. God, we thank you for your great love for us. God, we thank you that in you we have our, our everything. God, that you gave it all on the cross for us. And and for that, God, we just want to give you our lives. Uh, our, our lives, we want to give that to you. So God, this morning, we pray that you'd be blessed and that you'd be worshiped, worshiped in Jesus' name. So good, so good to 
And should this life bring suffering, Lord, I will remember what Calvary has bought for me, both now and forever. Yes, we thank you, Lord. Let's sing this out together. God, you're so good. Come on, lift your voice, church. God, you're so good. Yes, you are. God, you're so good. You're so good to So together God we thank you so much for your faithfulness for your goodness and for dying on the cross for us for standing in our place and giving us eternal life in you it's in Jesus name we pray amen her family. But now... Mom, my science project is due tomorrow. Jeremy hates me. When chaos strikes... Mom, I want to play Xbox. No, it's my turn. Her truth...
true powers will be revealed. Hey, honey, your mom said she's going to stop by later. Is that okay? <laughs> Do you hear that? I don't hear anything. Exactly. I'm packing! Nelly, what did you do? How did she know? Gifted by God with the power to read minds. I don't have any homework. No. I mean, I did all my homework. No. Well, I did some of it. No. Fine, I haven't started yet. There's the truth. The wisdom to restore peace. He said, that's it. We're finished. So sick of this texting. What? Let me see that. Uh, wait. This says sick of this testing, not texting. Oh, right. He was taking the ACT. Thanks, Mom. The insight to see the future. I forgot to think of a science project. Yeah, I thought you might. Yes! With a burst of unlimited capacity. And her secret weapon, the look. These abilities combine to form the ultimate example of warmth, tenderness, and dignity. church yeah happy mother's day thank you mom right we all had a mom hey if uh if you're here today and did not get a ticket and you're a mom raise your hand right now we want to get you a ticket and uh while she's passing those out you saw the hoot nanny video we have uh we go out every year over to cedar ridge this thursday night as they do this they raise funds and what we do is we provide food and we and we distribute it, and we need about a dozen people. We do this every year for them because that's where we worship for like eight years. So we need, we still need some people for the four to six. It's like four to eight that we're serving there for this. We still need a few people uh, from four to six. So if you're able to do that right after the service, uh, Chris is going to meet you right up here and uh, get those details worked out. Just take about five minutes if you're available this Thursday from about four to six. It'd be awesome. We'll serve. Now, what we're going to do, Kathy, is we're going to do a giveaway. We have three magnificent prizes for these lovely mothers, and we're going to draw uh, these tickets that I'm going to draw, and uh, it's not rigged. Some people questioned us about the first service and said, is this rigged? I said, no, it's not. So everybody have a ticket? You got a ticket? Okay, the last three numbers, three, eight, six. Woohoo! Make sure to verify that ticket. We're in church. All right. Number two. What what did that contestant get? A mug. Gift card. Gift card. Oh, everybody loves gift cards. Right. I want a gift card. Okay, ready? Three. I know everybody's got a three, right? Maybe not. Maybe a four. Three, seven, nine. Three seven nine, woohoo! Clap for that, and a new car. A new car. Starbucks. Lots of, 
Oh, it's got Olive Garden in this one. Anybody like bread? Yeah, I know. Yeah, a little bread with your wine. Okay, three, 71, 71. Uh, oh, back there. Woohoo! Now, is that fun? Now, on your way out, we've got little candles uh, to give all of you, all you losers. No, I mean, <laughs> all you guys light that and think about this little light of mine. You're going to let it shine. We, everything's connected. Don't throw stuff from the audience. I rebuke thee. Hey, welcome, welcome, and happy Mother's Day again. Let's just jump right in. We're going to look today at, at honoring our, our, our parents, honoring our father and mother, and we're going to look at this. Uh, this command here uh, from Ephesians chapter 6, if you want to look at the screens. We also have these printed in your bulletins as well. Uh, the Bible reads, honor your father and mother. Now, this is a quote uh, because it's one of the big ten commandments. And it says, this is the first commandment with a promise. We have all these commands, but this one has a promise. If you honor your father and mother, the Bible tells us, what? Things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on the earth. Now, that is a promise from God that if we honor our parents, that we will have, we'll be blessed. So why in the world did God give us this command to honor our father and our mothers out of all the commands? Why is this one so important? Because it has a promise. Let me give you three reasons. If you have your outline open there and want to write these down, three reasons why we need to honor our father and mother. Number one, every parent is flawed. Every parent is flawed. Your parents were flawed. Their parents were flawed. If you're a parent, you're flawed. If you have kids and their parents, they're flawed. Everybody's flawed. We know that, right? But that gives us no excuse not to honor our father and our mother uh, because it's about the position, not necessarily the person. Every person is flawed. Number two, a second reason why it's one of the big tens. We wouldn't be alive without our parents. Duh, right? They gave birth. Our mom gave birth to us, right? God used them to bring us into the world, which leads to number three. God chose their DNA to make you unique. God chose their DNA to make you unique. In other words, God created you to be you. He's made you on purpose with a purpose and for a purpose. You're not an accident. They're accidental parents, but there's no accidental children. There's illegitimate parents but there's no illegitimate children, right? Your parents may not have planned you, but God did. And you may say, why did God give me the parents that he gave me? Well, it boils down to they had the exact DNA that God used to create you to be unique. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 139. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. God was more interested in creating you than your parents having parenting skills. Your parents may have been good parents. Maybe they were checked out parents. Maybe they were bad parents. Uh, Maybe they were absentee parents, right? Maybe they hurt you, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But the bottom line is you couldn't have existed without their DNA. God brought them together to create you. And the Bible says we are to honor our father and mother. So today, let's look at how we do that. At every stage of life, Uh, we're going to look at, uh, I mean, every stage of our life, we relate to our parents differently. So we're going to look at what that looks like at obeying this command at every stage. So first, as a child, we honor our parents first by obeying them, right? It's simple. We know that. But this is what the Bible says. We honor our parents by obeying them, by listening to them, by heeding them by responding to what they say in their directions immediately and cheerfully. First-time obedience, right? Ephesians says, children, obey your parents. This is right, the right thing to do because God has placed them in authority over you. They have authority over us. One of the most important life skills, parents, that you can teach a child is to how to respond and react to authority because if you don't get this right, I'm telling you what, you're going to be miserable, and you're not going to be able to hold it down a job, right? You probably won't be successful. So one of the things we've got to teach our children is the difference between a, the position and the person. The person might be a jerk, but, hey, if they're your boss and it's at work, you might have to do things that, 
that you really don't want to do, but they're, they have authority over you. There's three spheres of authority that God's established on this earth, just three. And one is in the home. The other's in the church. The other's in the government. And if somebody, if a kid grows up going, nobody's ever going to tell me what to do, they're not going to make it too well in this life, right? Because a lot of times you've got to do those things. So we honor our mom and dad simply, number one, by obeying them as children. Number two, what about when we grow up and we're a teen and we're a young adult? How do we honor our father and mother as a youth? By respecting them. That's right. Nudge those kids. Right there, give them the elbows. Leviticus 19.3 says, each of you must respect your mother and father. Hebrews 12, we respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. Now, respect doesn't mean that you don't recognize their weaknesses. In fact, the, very, the older we get, the more we see their weaknesses, and we can tell how they're flawed. And then by the time you're teenagers, that's all you see is your parents' flaws right? Because that's the way they are. But God says, respect your parent in spite of their flaws, in spite of their weaknesses. What's that mean uh, to respect? It means we accept our parents and we forgive our parents. And we do that over and over because they're flawed. And and we're flawed too. And we need to reciprocate that. Why should I accept my parents? Um, I didn't have a choice. You know, kids say, I don't know. I didn't have a choice. Well, your parents didn't either. They didn't have a choice in creating you. Unless, of course, you were adopted or or they took you in with a foster care system, but they didn't have a choice. Think about that. They didn't have a choice, so you accept them. And what's it mean to forgive? What's it mean to forgive? Well, we forgive their faults. We overlook those weaknesses because you're going to need that one day, too, as you grow up. So we honor our parents as a youth, uh, as we grow into adulthood, by respecting them. Number two, we honor them by listening. Listen to your mom and dad. The Bible says a whole lot about this, about listening to your parents. Proverbs 13 says, intelligent children listen to their parents. Foolish children, what? Do their own thing. Now, as you grow up and you get out on your own, you're not bound to follow your parents' advice. You're not bound to that because you're on your own, right? You're growing up, you're getting out of the house, you're on your own. But you are to respect, you're to listen to them and respect what they say. Uh, there's no time in your life that you have the ability, wherever you are, whatever lot, whatever age, to be disrespectful to your parents. You just don't have that right. It's one of these big ten. Don't do it. So, I mean, what, what I've done, like marriage counseling and family counseling, I've talked to parents. I mean, parents who are just really jacked up, their lives are a wreck, right? They still sometimes have great kernels of truths and wisdom to relate to you as a, as a child. And, I mean, even, when, even if you don't want to follow your parent, sometimes I've seen the best advice come out of parents whose lives are a wreck to give to their kids. I mean, a broken clock is right twice a day. So we listen to our parents respectfully, even if your parents don't have it all together. So if you ever say something like, yeah, Mom, you ever get your act together, then I'll, I'll listen to you. No, you, don't, you can't say that because their life's never going to be all right and your life is never going to be all right. So we are to honor our father and mother by listening to them and respecting them. Proverbs 23 says, listen to your father's advice and don't despise an old mother's experience. I don't have a spot for this, but you can write this down. God gave me my parents for a purpose. What's that purpose? It was help to shape you into the person that you are today, good, bad, or indifferent. I talked about how my my folks divorced when I was 12, but when I was a child and a teen and a young adult, my parents still, they coached me, they mentored me, they even instilled things into me to where I could grow up one day and pastor a church. Proverbs 6 says this, Son, do what your father tells you and never forget what your mother taught you. Keep their words with you always, locked in your heart then it says their teaching will lead you when you travel protect you at night and advise you during the day their instruction or shining light their correction their correction can what everybody say that with me teach you how to live teach you how to live so as a, a young adult i i honor my father and mother by respecting them 
and by listening to them and never being disrespectful to them. Now, most of us are in this third stage when we have this adult-to-adult -adult relationship. So what in the world does the Bible say about our relationship as we've grown into adulthood with our uh, older parents? We're going to look at two things. The Bible talks about two things. As an adult, I honor my, my parents, honor my father and mother by appreciating them, by showing appreciation. The Bible says this in, in Proverbs 23, when, when your mother is old, show her your appreciation. Now, what should I appreciate in my parents? There's a bunch of things, but let's narrow it down to two that everybody can do. Two things, no matter who you are, no matter who your parents are, there are two things you can do. Number one, you can appreciate your parents' efforts. You can appreciate your parents' efforts. Listen, parenting is difficult. It's demanding. It's, it's, it's tough, right? And every parent said, amen. Parenting is tough. It's difficult. It's time-consuming. Have you ever thought about how much easier it would be for your parents had they not had you? Think about that. Had they not had you, it'd been a whole lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think about trees. You know, trees. They, they you can cut them. At, you can cut them at the base and see how old the tree is, because those rings represent like a year. And when when a when a tree is having a good year, it's well watered. It hasn't had to uh, uh, be abused by anything with the climate. And and the the rings are thick. You can tell. But when there's been a year of crisis or drought, a lack of water, those rings are very thin. And, and you can tell that when you cut that tree in half. You can look at my mom, and you can tell when I've had years of crisis because she's had years of crisis. And, she's, and you can tell that by the gray in her hair. My mom has always related this story of when I was two years old. We were camping. They couldn't find me, and they went to look for me. And they went to the shore to where our boat was, and they looked out in the middle of the lake, and there I was at two years old by myself in a rowboat. That caused some gray hair in my mama's head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, one night I didn't call my mom. I, I had my license by this time, and I usually came home by a certain time. I rolled in at 3.30. Where's my mom? She's on the porch bawling her eyes out when I pulled up into the driveway. That, I'm telling you, caused some gray hairs. When I went to seminary, I was gone out of the country for three months, uh, 90 days, uh, rarely calling because it was so expensive. And let me tell you what, that caused some gray strands in my mama's head. Um, when We used to live right next door. My family lived next door to my mom. When we got called here over seven years ago and we moved here, let me tell you, that caused my mama's hair to be white. <laughs> right? First time she ever flew is when she flew out here to, to visit us. But I'm telling you, when's the last time that you thanked your parents for putting up with you? For putting up with you? I mean, who else would have? I mean, when you were a brat balling, right? They took, they took care of you. They fed you. They gave you a safe place to live. So we appreciate our parents' efforts. Number two, another thing we can appreciate in, in any of our parents, appreciate their sacrifice. Parenting is expensive. Amen. Parents said, you know, elbow those kids. You're expensive. I looked this up. The average middle-income family to raise a kid to 18, $233,610. That's how much it costs, nearly $14,000 a year to raise a kid. Let me tell you, that's expensive. What could your parents have had had they not had you? A nicer car, nicer home, vacations. They could have had all that. Now, I understand there are some parents who decide not to have kids because it's a material thing, right? They, they want to have things or a career, uh, so they're like, I, I don't want to have kids. And, and, and it's a decision to do that. But parenting, let me tell you, it's an unselfish act. They care for you. They made a decision. They have you. They're, they're growing you up, and, and it's an unselfish decision to be a parent because we put up with all kinds of grief. The cost is high, but the benefit should pay off later on in life. I mean, just, just think about what your parents did for you. The clothes, the food, the doctor's visits, the accommodations, the braces. Man, they could have had the new Harley, a new boat, all that stuff. Wouldn't it be? Listen, 
in my book, well, th- there's been a definition that's been coined. Uh, the definition of a parent is I've got pictures in my wallet where money used to be. I mean, it is. It's costly. It's costly. Proverbs 23 says, so, so give your father and mother joy. Do you do that? Do you give your parents joy? May she who gave you birth, she gave you birth, be happy. You know, in our culture, in our Western culture, we do little as our parents grow older to, to respect them. In fact, uh, all over the planet, different cultures respect and honor age. They look to the older people for wisdom and for age. We don't do that here. Why don't we do that here? We kind of slough them off. So how, how is it that we honor them? I tell you, I mean, when a parent grows up and they're aged, the, the difference, the thing that happens with them, they're, they're disconnected to the world, right? I mean, they, they get older, and, and the, the workplace doesn't want them. All their friends, I mean, they're, they're, they're tired or whatever. They're, uh, all their friends are dying off, and then their kids are so busy with their lives or with their kids that they're, they're not given any appreciation, shown any, and they feel like a fifth wheel no matter where they are. So if, if your parent is still living, they have an intense need to know that you care. So how do you do that? How, that, that they made an impact on your life, that you're the person you are today because of them. So you need to express that on a, on a regular basis. And how do you do that? You affirm them. How do you affirm them? You, you stay in contact with them. You call them. Uh, you send them cards, you send them things, you, you, you invite them over, you show up, whatever that looks like, and you honor your father and mother, and you obey this command. And when you talk with them, listen, tell them about the details of your life. It might sound boring to you, but when you give them the details, it still feels like they're connected, like it means something, and it shows that appreciation. So, so talk to them, tell them all those details so they feel important and significant. So as an adult, I honor my parents first by appreciating them. And the second way that I honor my, my parents is by providing for them. Because when you grow up, the roles reverse. They took care of you, and you're eventually probably going to have to take care of them because that, that, that switches. And listen, that's the normal way. That's the way that it should be. Um, many of you have already moved into the stage they call the, the sandwich stage. What, what's that? It's where you have dependent children. And maybe they're actually older, but they've come back and they're still dependent upon you. And you've got an adult now that's dependent upon you, a parent who's dependent upon you. They call that this, the sandwich. Um, you're sandwiched in the middle. And we care for them. But, but what about the, the parents? What about the moms, particularly, who their husbands died, their widows, and they don't have kids or anybody to take care of them? Who are, who's supposed to take care of them? The church. The Bible's very clear about that, that the church is to care for the widows. Uh, and look at this, what it says in First Timothy chapter 5. It says, treat older women as you would your mother. So you see older women in this church, they're alone. Go up and give them a hug. Introduce yourself. Hey, you're my mom, right? And it says, treat younger women with all the purity as you would your own, would your, as you would your own sisters. So here in the church, I got all kinds of spiritual sisters. Not too many spiritual mothers because there's not too many older women who are going to say, I'm an older woman. And I'm going to be a spiritual mom. Now, there's a few, right? So I got all these spiritual sisters in the church, right? Um, the Bible goes on to say, Take care of any widow who has no one else to care for her. But if she has children or grandchildren, the first responsibility is to show godliness at home. And get this, and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases God. We honor our, our father and mother by taking care of them, by taking care of things at home. <laughs> Not out in the community, not at work, but we are to take care of them at home. And that's, that's how we are godly men and godly women, by caring for them. It's part of it by taking care of our parents. Nearly 12 years ago when my stepdad died, died of cancer. It was a rough year, bad last several weeks. I went in one day to, to speak with him, and it was just him and I. And he said, son, and he gave me some instructions. He said, I want you to take care of your mom when I go. And I said, I'll do that, and I want to keep that promise. Um, I mean, and not just because Doc asked me to, but because it's following God's command to care for my mom, to care for my parents. Uh, Jesus, he's dying on the cross for the sins of the world. I mean, the most important event in all of human history. He made seven statements, made seven statements, things like it is finished. Or, Father, I forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. He made seven statements, and one of them was to provide for his mom, his, his older mom. 
Joseph, his stepfather, had probably died. She was a widow. And up on the cross, one of the seven statements he said is, John, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. What was he doing? He was transferring, taking care of his mom to his friend, to his best friend. Incredible. Dying for the sins of the world. But yet, he shows us the example that we are to care for our moms, to care for our parents. It's that important. Um, look at, look at uh, 1 Timothy 5. It says, if anyone doesn't take care of his own relatives, listen to this, especially his immediate family, he is denied the Christian faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That's strong, pretty strong words. So when we honor our father and mother by taking care of them, we honor God, one of, one of the big tens. Um, so you honor him, and it's not that hard to do. I remember in the fifth grade uh, in art class, we were given clay for Mother's Day. We were to make our mom something special, and I, I, I formed out a heart a heart-shaped ashtray because mom smoked like a train. <laughs> but everybody did, you know. And I, I made that thing, decorated it, painted it green, and I gave it to my mom as I thought she'd use it all the time, you know. And about 20, 25 years later, we're going through some of her things that she had boxed up, some of her valuables, and I pull it out, and there was that pristine ashtray, never been used, but she cherished that. So when your parents grow an older, they... They don't need all these things. I mean, they probably already got what they need, but they need your love. They need your affection. We call it, they need our T-I-M-E. They, they need our time. They need us to check in and, and, and love on them and express that. Uh, and, and we do that by just giving them attention at, at every point that we can. Uh, so we honor our father and mother. I mean, just... He, I mean, it's one of the big, uh, we keep saying it's the Big Ten. It's right up there, you know, with adultery and, and do not covet, don't worship other gods, honor your father and mother. Now, I want to say a special word to those of you who were hurt by a parent. Who maybe uh, you were hurt physically, emotionally, uh, maybe even sexually. I mean, in, in a crowd this size. There's probably some unfinished business that some of us have uh, with our parents. Uh, Jesus said some of the strongest things against those who would abuse a child. Look at what he says in Matthew 18. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusted me to fall into sin or to harm them in any way, it'd be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. It's that serious. It's that serious. So what's God expect you to do if you've been hurt by a parent? He's not asking you to deny it. He's not asking you to repress it. He's not asking you to excuse it, to ignore it, to slough it off. He's not asking you to fake, fake it, but he's asking you to face it. You've got to, to face it because if you don't face it, you're going to continue that cycle uh, that destructive cycle in your life with your kids, and if you've got that bound-up anger because you were hurt as a child, you're going to take it out on your closest loved ones, your spouse, your children. And, and the truth is, if you don't face it, you're going to allow that anger to control you today. They might be dead in the grave, but they're still controlling you emotionally because You've, you've been hiding it. You've been faking it for all these years, so you've got to you gotta release that anger and get it worked out so you can stop that cycle of abuse. And, 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 and what I'm talking about, it's a courageous thing. I know it's a hard thing to do. It's a difficult thing to do, and it takes courage. And you've got to be able to sit down if that parent is alive and to have that conversation and stop hiding. The Bible actually says, as far as it depends upon you, live at peace with everyone. And the truth is, maybe your parents are dead who did that. Or maybe they won't listen to you because they've cut off a relationship. But if you can, but if you can, what do you do? Well, you have that relationship, and the end of the conversation is like, you know what? I want to forge a new relationship with you, no matter the past. But, but you, it's okay to deal with that pain, to have that discussion. And then you forgive. We've been talking about forgiving. But, but you make it right before it's too late, if at all possible, if at all possible. And you stop that cycle of deception. Jesus said, know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, not only God knows how deeply you've been hurt, but only God can heal that. 
And he wants you to face that. You got to face this truth will set you free. Now, some of you may be a different situation altogether. Maybe you were abandoned as a child. And it's kind of cool in scripture because there's actually a special promise if you're abandoned by a parent. In Psalm 27, it says, My father and mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. You got a heavenly father who will never abuse you, never leave you, never forsake you, never abandon you, never hurt you when we turn to him. That's the kind of God we have because he's a good, good father. He's the perfect father. Everybody else is flawed, and we got to get that. I'm flawed. Our parents were flawed. Our kids and their parents are flawed. But Jesus said, God's provided for us this Ten Commandments. Honor your father and mother, and we can do that. We can do that today. Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you as the perfect father, knowing that none of us as perfect parents and we honor moms and dads especially because it's Mother's Day because of their position and not because of the person who they were you know our moms went through pain to bring us here and <laughs> and we can just rejoice in that fact that you used them our imperfect parents our flawed parents to make us into the people that you want us to be today so today we, we honor, oh God, all kinds of mothers in our midst. And, and I know for some, Mother's Day is such a difficult day. So we ask you to comfort the heartaches today for those who've lost mothers, maybe lost a child through miscarriage or death. And, and we pray for stepmoms who struggle with a blended family, for those who have delayed or failed adoptions. Their hearts have been broken. We pray for those broken relationships with a mom and a, and a child comfort these moms today lord and father comfort those who, who want to be mom but it didn't happen for those who struggle with infertility i pray that you would lift them up and give them comfort and you say weep with those who weep but also you say rejoice with those who rejoice so we rejoice with those who rejoice and celebrate mothers in this church who've given birth in this past year thank you for the joy of new life may you grant them sleep at night and father we we celebrate those who've adopted children and those who are caring for foster children thank you for grandmas and grandmothers who've taken care of grandbabies this year we celebrate those who are carrying babies right now that you would bless their pregnancy give them a safe birth we thank you for mothers of preschoolers those who, who, are, who are in school, who are chauffeurs, who are packing lunches, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and thank you for the moms who are now experiencing the empty nest. And Father, I pray that, that we would be able to lift up moms today, that we could follow this, this Big Ten command till the day we die to honor our parents. Father, give us the strength to do that. Father, thank you so much for Jesus demonstrating that on the cross, how important this is, and that we can look at the cross as the source and the solution for everything. Father, that we could cling to the cross and understand the purpose of Jesus' death, that we can claim you as Lord of our life, and that you would bring healing in every way. Father, for any here today who's not followed you, I pray that they would take that next step to receive you as Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for all the wisdom that you give to us through Scripture, through experience, and through providing for us our parents. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Uh, I want to share with you and celebrate those who got baptized into Christ last week. I'm giving myself fully and completely to him, and I'm gonna follow him through good or bad. To take Christ into my heart and uh, be a better person, make the better choices. There's a lot in my past, and I've been running, trying to hide it. And you told me that you necessarily weren't the best person in the world. And 
that hit home. So I don't have to hide it. I can actually show up and be like, no, this is who I am today. I'm not him anymore. And that's when they realize that I can still be saved. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God. The Son of God. And I receive him. And I receive him. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Celebrate that. You can go ahead and stand. Hey, today, if uh, you can go ahead and stand. If, if today's, if you, if your next step is baptism, we have that prepared and all the towels and everything you need to change into. Uh, if that's your decision, if if you need prayer for something, I mean, this is a church family. This is when, uh, if we are seeking as the celebration or if we're seeking relief, uh, we have uh, a prayer partners out here in the lobby. As you leave, grab one of those people who are just like you, and they'll pray with you or for you. So let's worship the Lord on this Mother's Day as we close down this this day. Woo. Overwhelmed, but I won't break through the battle. I will say, Your grace will be enough. Your grace will be enough Under fire but we won't fall We will never be alone You'll always be enough You'll always be enough Now in God we trust In His name we hope I know And God will not be shaken And God is here with us He's already won, I know, and God will not be shaken, God will not be shaken. We will follow where you go, we will trust to the unknown, I know you go before. I know you go before Lead my heart now in your ways For we're carrying your name Your promise never fails Your promise never fails Now in God we trust In His name we hope I know God will not be shaken God is here with us He's already won, I know, and God will not be shaken, God will not be shaken. Solid rock. And 
Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us here this morning. We pray you have a very blessed Mother's Day and a blessed week. We'll see you back here next time.